Hello everyone. Now we are going to continue with the discussion on MOSFET, focusing on MOS capacitor at equilibrium. As a revision, we have discussed on the basic information of MOSFET. It is a three terminal device with the terminal known as gate, source and rain. The gate of the MOSFET is situated on a layer of oxide, which is an insulator, and below the oxide is the substrate, a semiconductor. So the gate itself can also be seen as a capacitor. Thus, in this video, we are going to discuss the fundamentals of MOS capacitor characteristic. From this point onwards, all the discussion will be based on n-type FET or n-FET. The MOS capacitor includes the gate area of a MOSFET, which is made of a degenerate n plus semiconductor at the top plate, followed by an insulating layer of oxide, and the bottom plate is the p-type substrate. This is the configuration of an NFET. Just a basic revision of a capacitor. When a positive voltage is applied to the top plate of a capacitor, negative charges will be induced on the lower gate. Thus, the same thing happens here. This phenomena can explain why the gate voltage can control the carrier concentration of the surface of the semiconductor layer under the oxide. Let's take a look at the MOS capacitor band diagram. The band diagram is always drawn based on line A, A prime here. So this is the band diagram of the MOS capacitor. The left side is the gate region. The conduction band of the gate region ECG is overlapping with the Fermi level of the gate EFG. This is because the gate is made of a degenerate n-type material. The bar here is the oxide layer. Basically, we don't draw the energy levels of an oxide for simplicity. The right side is the substrate region. The substrate of an NFET is a P-type semiconductor. So EF is below EI, nearer to EV. At this state, the Fermi level is not constant throughout the system. So at the charge neutrality, the EF is not constant. To achieve equilibrium, electrons flow through external circuit from gate to the substrate, causing the EF to line up. The symbols shown here are work function shown in phi and electron affinity chi. The work function is given by the distance between vacuum level and Fermi level and chi is given by the distance between vacuum level and conduction band level. For the M plus gate, the work function is the same as the electron affinity because the conduction band is overlapping with the Fermi level. So in short, the transformation of the band diagram from charge neutrality to equilibrium can be given as follows. Since the Fermi level must be constant throughout the system, the electrons flow through an external circuit from gate to the substrate. Thus, the negative charge in the substrate increase. At the same time, the Fermi level at the substrate was raised. When the Fermi level is constant, that is continuous from the gate to the substrate, the system reaches equilibrium. Due to the rise of the Fermi level, the band at the substrate bends. The substrate surface is depleted of majority carriers. In this case, the p-type substrate is depleted from holes at the interface and results in depletion region. The band bending results in built-in voltage given by this equation. Some voltage is distributed across the outside and the depletion region. This area looks like a capacitor having two dielectric layers. One is the outside layer and the other one is the depletion region since at this stage the depletion region is insulative due to the lack of majority carriers in the region. Further focusing on the interface, the electron transfer from gate, which is metal or N plus silicon to substrate silicon, results in the interface is depleted of carriers, of which the gate charge is positive and the charge at the silicon depletion region is negative. Looking at this enlarged image, the Fermi level in the semiconductor crosses the intrinsic Fermi level near the surface. This means the semiconductor is effectively n-type at silicon, silicon dioxide interface, although it is doped with p-type dopant. This is because at this point, the Fermi level near the surface is above the intrinsic Fermi level, EI, 
which is closer to conduction level, EC. This n-type region in a p-type substrate is a channel in which electrons from source can flow here to the drain. Thus, this means at equilibrium, a channel does exist, but there are only a few electrons in the channel, so the conductance is very low, and thus the current flow is too small. This is called subthreshold condition. To summarize, the gate structure of a MOSFET can be considered as two capacitors. At equilibrium where the Fermi level is constant throughout the system, band bending happens and create built-in voltage and depletion region. The point at the semiconductor surface close to the SiO2-Si interface is effectively n-type, which means that at equilibrium, channel does exist but the conductance is very low due to the lack of mobile carriers.